Welcome back to Grade 7 Science, Unit Number 1, Life Systems. This is Lessons Number 1.2 and Number 1.3, Ecosystems and Sampling. Last class, we read about organisms and communities, but we didn't really talk about the environment and how the environment affects the life forms that live and exist in an area. All forms of life are affected by the environment. There are boundaries and weather and climate conditions to think of. Living or biotic things interact with the non-living or abiotic parts of their environment every day. This interaction between the biotic and the abiotic is known as an ecosystem. An ecosystem can be small or large. It includes all of the biotic and abiotic features of the area. In general, the environment is consistent throughout an ecosystem, so we can say that an ecosystem is generally hot or cold. The physical and environmental boundaries are pretty clear. For example, the edges of a field or a pond would mark the physical boundaries. And envi an environmental boundary would be the edge of an area where the climate changes. Now, there are four abiotic factors to consider when thinking about an ecosystem. Before we continue, can you guess what any of these four important factors are? So I want you to do, put the video on pause and just think about what factors um, you need to take into consideration when thinking about an ecosystem. All right, let's see how you did. The sun provides organisms with food, warmth, and energy. The amount of sunlight an ecosystem receives affects its climate and seasonal events, such as vegetation growth and migration of wildlife. Air provides oxygen for animals and carbon dioxide for plants to make food. Water is something which all organisms need for life processes. Water is also a natural habitat for some organisms. Soil provides a habitat for some underground animals. Soil also provides nutrients that sustain plant life. And of course, humans need soil to grow crops. Studying large ecosystems can be very difficult for scientists since there are so many different biotic and abiotic features to identify. It is just impossible to count the numbers of all the plants and wildlife in the ecosystem. So scientists use the sampling method. They choose a small area, about a square meter, and count the numbers in the area. Then they use basic math to estimate how many plants, animals, and other biotic and abiotic features there are in the entire ecosystem. And in this picture, ecologists have clearly marked the area which they're using for their sample. Biotic and abiotic features will be counted only within the white square. Okay, just to wrap things up, let's end today's video with a discussion challenge. And we'll talk about this in class tomorrow. Think of an ecosystem. Your ecosystem can be large or small. You're going to share with the class the name of your ecosystem, as well as at least two biotic and two abiotic features of your ecosystem. So what you should do when I finish speaking is put the video on pause so that you can either type or write down the name of an ecosystem that you've thought of 
and list two biotic and two abiotic features of your ecosystem. If you're finding this challenging, you should go back and listen to this video, uh, as well as last day's video, um, at least another time. And then when you're ready, put the video on pause so you can try this challenge. And that does it for our second science video of the year. I look forward to hearing um, all of the ideas that you have about various ecosystems, as well as the biotic and abiotic features within these ecosystems. Um, but until we meet again, this concludes today's video.